Hello everybody and welcome back to Guild Wars. In the last episode, we went off and took care of unsettling rumors about opposition to King Adelburn, uh, which turned out to be... I guess they were false, it doesn't really matter, <laughs> but I guess they were false. Someone was re like rendering out here. Uh, in this episode, uh, I did what I said that I do off screen. I got five scale fins and three baked husks. Yes, I'm sorry. I said dull carapaces in the last episode. Let me drop this. I also actually picked up a long bow, um, which is the same type of bow as the starter bow. Oh no, it's a recurve. Never mind. This is a long bow. There is a difference between different bows. Um, I guess I'll get to explaining that once we get to the ranger missions. Um, for now, the starter bow, yeah, it's very basic. So, I'll exchange five scale fins for this belt pouch. Which we desperately want, because BOOM! It gives you a bigger, uh... OH! Why the hell do I keep doing that? Ugh! God, this is annoying. That's twice now that I've clicked the close window button. Ugh. You give... It gives you a bigger, um, inventory. Ugh. Jeez. I keep doing that. Anyway, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna warp to Ashford Abbey. Ashford Abbey. Because we want an item that is right outside the gates. Uh, there's another collector out here, as I said, that he, he is a, he is looking for baked husks. And his name is Jacobs. Don't say anything. That's Wind Waker, what am I doing? Uh, we want these, the Crichton Boots. Um, they only give two more uh, armor, but it's better than nothing. We can also sell those, uh, the Rawhide Boots. Um, but we do want to get the uh, Crichton boots for now. So yeah, I got some brand spanking new boots, butter shoes. Um, yes. And then the other thing we want to do should still have the beautiful pearl and the beautiful feather. Uh, the other thing that I was going to do was I said that we were going to Master Ranger Nente. Red Iris Flower! To, uh, learn some more Ranger stuff. Um, every, every class has its own, like, second master, I guess you could call him. Uh, they have a second teacher that is, that will help them become better in the class that they have, I guess. I guess you could say it that say it that way. Uh, the first the first teacher that our character having here was um, Ranger Artemis, and now we have Ranger Nente. She here this this girl. She's looking for Grawl necklaces. She's only looking for three, so it's not all that hard to get them, and we can get a Crichton vest which will increase our energy by five, just like our, our vest does. So we want to get that. Uh, so here we are in Regent Valley, the next little uh, section of the game. Ooh, they have devourers here. Devourers are not hostile. They will only become hostile when attacked. Uh, so let's try attacking him here. The carry-on devourers are melee fighters. In fact, they are part of the warrior class. Um, they get skills of the warrior, or they get skills that the warrior can use. Um, they can get frenzy. They can get um, endure pain, which is really annoying. Um, they can also get um, shouts that the warrior can learn. So they get really annoying later on. Oh, they do drop dull carapaces. I thought that wasn't until later. We do want those. There is a collector looking for dull carapaces. Q. 
Kill it. Come on. All right, there we go. Oh, I didn't drop. Them. I'm gonna fight one more, and then if I don't get another one, yeah, I'll I'll be getting them off screen like I did like I did the other collectibles. Yeah. And that is a Lash Devourer. Lash Devourers, um, they're also not hostile, but they have ranger skills, so they can learn ranger attacks. Damn, there's a lot of carrying, or Devourer things out here. This guy's the one that's looking for dual carapaces, and he has an Ascalon Hornbow, which we do kind of want. We also want the Devourer Egg, um, but we get a Devourer Egg in a, in a quest, so we don't really need it. We do want that Horn Bow, because it's really good. So here's Master Engine Ente. If you're serious about your... Okay. Uh, the care He wants us to learn the basics of Beast Mastery. He will give us two Ranger skills. Permanent, of course. No, I don't want to do that. I want to move them. You can move skills around. Um, you cannot unequip skills out in the wild, but you can move them around. Um, uh, he wants us to go down to the statue of Melandru, which is down this way. And Melandru being one of the gods of Tyria. And um, get. he wants us to uh, charm a Melandru stalker. Stalker? Is that what they're called? Melandru Stalker? They're not hostile. Um, all animal. There are some animals you can uh, charm. Obviously, there are other animals, like that raging bull that we found, or the rogue bull uh, from a couple episodes ago, um, who will... Um, who are not charmable, because they don't count as animals. Which kind of sucks. It's weird. There it is. These, these are Melandru Stalkers. I actually have another, I have a, uh, my other ranger um, on this account has a Melandru Stalker now level 20. Level 20 being the level cap of this game. Yeah, I know, it's really low level cap. So let's, actually what we're going to do is we're going to want to go near this stat, this uh, shrine. Because the shrine will give us a mending ability, which grants us plus 3 health regeneration while we stand near it. So we don't even have to get worried about hits, so let's charm this guy. Like I said, they will start attacking you. Um, there are some animals that are really amazing, but they're really hard to charm. And boom, there's our first pet. Yay! What up, buddy? What's up? What's going on? How's it going? What should I call him? Uh, to, you can rename, you can actually name your pets in this game, you know, what you can do is you can either put in, to put in a command, either, it's always a slash, and you can either put in name pet, or you can alternatively just put in pet name. Now, I'm going to name him, hmm, our first pet. Yeah. Don't worry, he won't be staying that way, and wow, our pet is at a higher level than us. Um, oh no, Creed's stronger than me! Um, now I'm going to show you some of the combat with the pet, um, before we head back. They will automatically attack any enemy that you're going after, and they will go in and, you know, they'll, they'll start doing damage. There are, um... Of course, skills like Comfort Animal that can heal your pet. Um, there are skills that can make them stronger. Um, there are shouts you can do to make them faster. There's a ton of stuff you can do. And like I said, they do... Ooh! Did I get enough dull carapaces? Get that bow? That'd be awesome. Uh, they Obviously, they do... Ju they, they're just there for melee support for the ranger. Um, that's really it. Um, a good combination... Um, that I know of, actually, is a warrior ranger. 
Um, because with the Warrior Ranger, you can get... I believe there are pets that can actually heal. I'm not sure on that. Um, but, you know, if you're a warrior, you definitely want support going into a fight. And uh, having a pet with you um, as a warrior, both of you doing melee, is really good. So Warrior Ranger class is actually extremely helpful. It's a really good class. Uh, let's see now. Do I have enough of uh, those dull characters? Yes, I do! I'm getting that. What the heck do I have this for? This is a horn bow, uh, and this is a long bow. Long bows are actually the slowest of all bows. Um, the horn bow is, I think, just as slow. It's there. A lot of the bows. Actually, I want that. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to do one. Um, a lot of the bows in this game are. Well, there are two bows that have fast attacking speed. Short bow being the fastest. And a... Oh god, I can't remember the other one. I really can't remember the other the other one. There's one other bow that shoots faster. I know, um, horn bows... Let's see, do we have a horn? We, uh, we have the horn bow. Um, the last one we... Uh, the starter bow is a horn bow. Oh no, it was a recurve. Recurve and long bows, um, shoot the slowest, I believe. And horn bows and another set of bows um, shoot normal at a normal rate. Uh, so it's actually we're really close to another quest, so we're gonna go take care of that. It'll also help us finish off another quest. So. Uh, we want to take care of this quest first before going back to Ascalon City because this quest will actually, uh, like I said, open up uh, the completion for another quest that is available right now. Um, a quest opened up because we killed the rogue bow, a uh, rogue bull. Um, his owner is angry and he wants a carry on, or uh, he wants a devourer egg. This quest will give us two devour eggs so let's just uh, go inside and with our uh, pet this should be fairly easy this is fairly easy easy even without your pet though so we'll wait for this guy I'm pretty sure a couple devourers pop up when he gets close or not I thought there would be I guess not okay he's done No, 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 no. Go after the Vower. Oh, crap! Ah, balls. Why did I do that? They're not hostile. Kill them, Creed! Do it for your master. I guess for this guy. Stop running away! Get over here! What are you doing? Go! Go! Yeah! Oh! I can sell that. Or trade him. Uh, you can obviously trade between players in game. Uh, I don't like... I usually don't like... Um, oh, this guy's really easy. And... Dead. Um, I don't usually like trading between other players because a lot of the time players will obviously try to scam you. Um, oh, yes. Although green isn't very rare, it's just, or valuable, but, oh, that is still nice. Vials of Die are very, very, very valuable in this game. Uh, depending on the color, of course, whatever is in, whatever is most in demand, um, by other players, um, that color is more uh, rare, or is more valuable. Obviously, ooh, having a good time today. We want to raise up beast mastery, marksmanship, and 
Beastmaster again. So we are now at two levels of Beast Mastery, three of Marksmanship, one in Wilderness Survival. We'll probably raise Wilderness Survival next time, maybe. I may want to get more in Marksmanship. These are all good to sell. Bone Staff especially. If I can get it identified. You need identification sets to identify them. Wow! To identify certain items. Let's take care of this guy. Dude, what are you doing? There's one right there. And he just runs off like, oh, we're done. Let's grab this stuff. There's also two up there, but I really don't care about them. The only thing they're going to give us is dull carapaces, and I just, yeah. I don't need that. I don't need those anymore. I don't think so, anyway. There are a, there are a lot of traders of or collectibles in this game. Collect not just collectibles, collectors. Um, so what you're gonna want to do a lot of the time, get out like Notepad or even just a Notepad, not just the program, um, and write down what collector wants what and what uh, area they can be found in because a lot of the time collectors have really good stuff that you want. So now that we've done that, let's, if, uh, to end this episode off, let's head back to Ascalon City. I'm going to trade off a few things, and I'm going to show you what the merchant is like. Not very complicated. Uh, let's sell... Oh, I can't sell those. Great. Sell the longbow, sell the dull carapaces, sell the divine symbol, the truncheon. I want to keep these because they're not identified. Uh, and I guess that's it. Um, well, how much money do we have? 76, good. Because now I can show you guys one more thing. Level 12! Holy crap, some people are intense. Level 12 is unheard of here. In, in this part of the game, because... Holy crap. That is that is insane. You should be at least... I mean, you should be at least level 7 before leaving Ascalon, but... I don't, I don't want to go to you. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? I wanted to... Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There he is. Elias. There are two different... Uh, weapons, crafter, people. You have a quest. That I will not be doing for a while, because that quest requires a lot of traveling. This guy will customize weapons. Uh, what customizing weapons does is, watch, it only costs 10 gold, so let's do it. Boom! Just for customizing it for your character, you get a 20% damage boost uh, for that weapon. What do you do? Ah, oh, he makes weapons. Uh, he wants a. He has a Kylo Axe of Fortitude. Ooh, that's good. Well, for this this part of the game, it's this. It does the same damage as ours, but it does have that plus one damage against Char, which is fairly nice. Uh, the Kylo Axe of Fortitude is very nice as well, but it cost. These both cost a lot of money, and uh, we got other stuff to buy. Um, plus, I can get tons of stuff. I have, because of my other accounts, I have, or I already have tons of items, tons of material, uh, or tons of crafting materials, all this stuff. But yeah, that was the weapon customization, that was the merchant. Um, in the next episode, we will be heading off to look at other second professions. Um, more specifically, we will be going to, uh, let's see... Let's see here. We will be heading off to the warrior. And if we can fit it in fit it in the time, I doubt it because it's a very long stretch to get to this area. Um we may be able to get to the elementalist. Um but oh, they are a long ways off. 
They're like in completely different. The warrior is over there, and the elementalist is literally over there. So they're really just they're in totally op opposite directions. So maybe we'll get to them, maybe we won't. But until then, I will see you guys later.